excellent. Oh, I didn't stump anybody with that one. That's good to know though. <laughs> good to know. All right. Well, Cindy, do you want to introduce yourself to the group real quick? Sure. Turn on my camera for a minute. Hi, everybody. My name is Cindy Hansen, and I do education and advocacy for ORCA Network. I work really closely with Amanda and Wendy and really, really excited to have Lucy with us today. So welcome everybody and thanks for joining us. All right, and Wendy, you wanna introduce yourself? Hi, I'm uh, Wendy Sines and I'm the manager at the Langley Whale Center. And we are reopened um, three days a week in June. So come on over and visit us. Thanks, and I'm Amanda Colbert. I assist both the education and the Langley Well Center departments. Um, usually I'm the one that gives the Zoom, but today I'm actually super excited to introduce Lucy Martin to you, uh, you guys. She's uh, been our intern at Orca Network for the last several weeks, and she spent a lot of time putting together uh, the material that we're gonna go over for June. Um, so Lucy attends Friday Harbor High School. Uh, like I mentioned, this is an internship, so she's just going to be working with us on this project. But the reason that she is, is once she graduates high school and goes on to college, she's very interested in learning more about marine science and getting involved with the seas and the oceans, maybe our orcas. Um, it's a little open-ended right now, but that's a great way to go into it. So I'm going to turn everything over to Lucy. She's going to present. We've got a little activity for you at the end where we'll go ahead and unmute everybody and kind of give everyone a chance to talk a little bit. But um, I'm interested to see what you've got for us, Lucy. So take it away. All right. Thank you, guys. I'm so excited to see how many people showed up. It's awesome. So I will share my screen and get started. Let me just make sure that you guys can see that before I... <laughs> get going. Yes, you're good. Okay, perfect. All right. So as Amanda said, I'm a junior at Friday Harbor High School on San Juan Island. And it's really cool that I get to do this. I kind of feel like I've sort of grown up with the whales um, a little bit. I've gotten to learn about them through school and, you know, see them from time to time, which has been really great. Um, so I'm excited to give you a quick overview in this presentation and then talk a little bit more about it um, through the rest of the month. Uh, so just a quick note before I get started with the presentation, if you did print out that or how to draw an ORCA activity sheet and want to start working on it right now, you know, during the presentation, you can definitely do that. Um, and then, you know, at the end, we could sort of share the share your ORCA drawings and things like that. So if you want to get started on that now, that's totally great. All right, so this presentation is pretty much just a quick overview to hopefully get you guys excited to dive a little more, um, to dive a little deeper into um, specific aspects of the orcas later in the month. Um, but so there's lots of different orcas all over the world, which is really, really cool. Um, for this mini series, we're specifically talking about the Southern resident orcas, which are the ones that are endangered. So the Southern residents, don't migrate seasonally, they tend to, they live in a range basically. So the Southern residents usually spend summer months around Washington state and Southern British Columbia in the Salish Sea. And I live on San Juan Island. So it's kind of smack dab in the middle. Um, it's right in the middle of uh, that location. So that's where they spend the summer, um, you know, eating their salmon, their food up here. And then in the winter when the orca's main food source, which is Chinook, becomes a little less abundant. The whales travel a little farther um, to look for their food. So L and K pods are no, have been known to travel um, to the northern coast of California in the winter months and have been spotted as far south as Monterey Bay, which is pretty far south. Um, that's a long way to travel. Uh, and then J pod tends to stay a little closer uh, to the Salish Sea. Um, they haven't been seen migrating as far. So in the Salish Sea, there are a few other types of orcas um, that live here too, but the main difference between the southern residents and those types is that those other two types uh, tend to eat, they like to eat big marine mammals like seals, and the southern residents really like to eat fish. Uh, they really, really like their salmon, um, so much so that we consider them salmon specialists. So they really like Chinook salmon, um, and it makes up about 80% of their diet. So 
80% of the food they eat is that specific type of salmon of Chinook. Um, their teeth are specially designed to sort of grab on and hook onto the salmon and keep it from sliding out of their grip because fish are slippery. And um, you know, if it was able to slide in and out of their mouth, they wouldn't be able to eat as much. So it's cool that their teeth have, are kind of designed um, to eat specifically salmon. And so orcas need about 200 to 300 pounds of food each day um, to maintain their um, body weight, which is about, so they need to eat about 4% of their weight. So can you imagine eating 200 to 300 uh, pounds of food each day? That's crazy. Um, another thing that the Southern residents have been um, known to do is they work together when they hunt for salmon. And then they sometimes they'll share the food between their um, to their family groups and in their pod um, to make sure that everyone gets enough. Um, the southern residents get to be about 18 to 26 feet long um, when they're fully grown, so about the size of a small school bus, which is pretty big, and they can weigh anywhere from around 6,000 to 12,000 pounds, and the males typically are larger than the females. And their life expectancy uh, varies and is normally between about 30 years and 100 years. Uh, the oldest Southern resident, um, Granny, who is a member of JPOD, um, passed away a few years ago, um, but was estimated to be about 105 years old when she died. So that's pretty old. Um, so they do live about the same time as humans do. So this month's theme is about family and the Southern resident families are super interesting and really, really close knit. They develop really deep bonds with their family members, um, which is really, really interesting. So within the Southern residents, there are, are three pods. Um, you guys all, all got that question right in the poll. Um, their groups are called pods. Um, so it's split into J pod, K pod and L pod, um, each with sub pods or family groups centered around the eldest female who's usually in charge of the group. So they're what we call a matriarchal society, meaning that basically their moms are in charge and they stay with their moms um, for their whole life, um, which is pretty interesting. So they travel together and they stay together um, for their whole life. So as of February 17th this year, there are 75 members all together. There's 24 whales in J-Pod, 17 whales in K-Pod, and 34 whales in L-Pod. Um, just this past year, there were two calves born into J-Pod and one into L-Pod um, to make it an even 75. Um, the orcas, so when you're out watching for orcas, you can see them in smaller groups around 10 animals or in larger pods or super pods where you could see upwards to 50 orcas at a given time, which was really, really cool. The southern residents use echolocation to communicate um, with each other and to find food to do both. And the sounds they make are kind of clicks or whistles. Um, and typically the clicks are thought to be more, used more to locate prey um, and to figure out where they're going to navigate. And the whistles tend to be more for social interactions to talk to um, the other wh whales. So each pod has, its has a unique dialect or a sort of repertoire of calls to communicate with one another. And there are some calls that are shared between all three pods. So if you can kind of think about it as each pod has its own language and then they have one big language that they sort of share all together. So these calls are learned and culturally passed down through generations. So they don't go to school, you know, and learn how to read and write like we do, but instead they sort of pass their language down. Um, you know, the moms pass it down to their kids and then they'll pass it down to their kids, um, which is really incredible. Um, it's also pretty cool. I find it fascinating that um, an orca's echolocation and communication, their calls can travel for up to like 10 miles underwater, which is pretty far because I know if I was trying to talk to a friend or a family member 10 miles away, I wouldn't be able to do it with just my voice. So that's pretty cool. Um, so like other whales and dolphins, the southern residents exhibit a wide range of behaviors. They do a lot of really cool things. So, you know, when you're watching them, they don't always just, you know, swim in a straight line. They do a lot of really cool things. Um, so in the upper left, you can see, or upper right, sorry, um, you can see, so breaching is when an orca leaps fully out of the water, the whole body comes out and it often ends in a big splash and it makes a really loud noise. 
Um, and those are really cool to see. Spy hopping is when um, an orca lifts its head above the surface of the water just to sort of take a look around. And orcas have just about as good as eyesight as you do. So they have about equal quality of eyesight as humans do. So in the upper left, you can see um, that whale spy hopping just to take a look around. Um, and when the orcas are tail lobbing, they slap their tails against the water, which makes a really loud noise. Sometimes they also slap their pectoral fins, which is the fin sort of on the side of the whale. Um, and that's called a peck slap, peck short for pectoral. And then some other fun things just to note, uh, the southern residents have been reported on multiple occasions, they like to play in the kelp. And they do it often enough that scientists have come up for a word for it and they call it kelping. Um, so they'll drag the kelp around in their mouth and play with it, which is really fun. Um, and a few years ago, a few of the whales were spotted parading around with a salmon on their head, kind of like a hat. Um, they haven't seen it happen recently. Maybe it went out of style or, or something like that. Um, but they have really unique, a really unique culture and set of behaviors that not a lot of other animals have, which is really fun to observe. So I hope that this gets you a little, you know, super excited to dig deeper into the cool things about the Southern residents um, through the rest of the month. You know, so it's a mini series. So this is a good um, overview. And then we'll dive a little deeper into um, some of the other topics about them in the next ones. But let's move on to the activity. So um, we can take questions if you guys have any. And those of you who have been working on your drawing throughout the presentation, if you want to share it, you can. I did a little drawing of an orca earlier, and I can share mine. Um, and if you want to start working on a drawing, that's great too. And you can start that right now. So I will stop my share so I can see you guys. Let's see. OK. And I will start and I'll share mine. I drew mine earlier today because I knew I wouldn't have time to do it when I'm pre presenting. I hope you guys can see it. Uh, I don't know. I think I'm going to name mine Sunny because it's sunny outside. And I think my whale would like um, being in the sun. So if you guys have any questions or want to share a drawing of your whale, you can do that right now too. Lucy, will you put yours back up on the screen? You froze there for a second. Okay, <laughs> we'll do here. No, the piece of paper. Yeah, the paper, the oh, one you drew. My, yeah, my drawing. Okay. Yes. Um, oh, look, yeah. there's already some that are done. Oh, that's oh, so awesome. cool. They're really fun to draw. Eric, do you have a name for yours? Oh, his mic's not working either. Your mic's not working. That's okay. You wanna type it in the chat and we'll tell everybody? I think Charlie had her hand up as well. Charlie, did you have a question or do you have a name for your whale? Um. I never got to see Lucy's because when other people talk it, I'm on speaker view, so I only see them. Okay, well, I will talk and hopefully you can see it here when I'm making noise. Can you see my whale now? Yeah, looks cute. Oh, good. Thank you. And Oh, and Eric, I see in the chat where he is a good name. That's a good name for a whale. I like it. All right, you guys, is anybody getting stuck on any of the steps? I have a screenshot that I can put up if that helps you look at it a little bit bigger. If you don't have the printout, I'll look at some of them from the Children's Center. Awesome. Great. Very nice. Yours is good too. These are all so great.
Oh, you want the screen screenshot. Amanda, can you share that? Um, yeah. So they can see the drawing instructions. Great. Are you guys seeing the right screen? Yes. Okay. I can probably make, let's see if I can make it bigger. So it's really fun about this activity, you guys, is um, <laughs> I put this together. And if you look at the orca, you know, completely finished, you're like, wow, how am I going to draw all those details? But if you break it down into these steps and you look at the shapes, it's OK to go back in with an eraser and kind of erase a little bit. And then if you have a pen at the very end, outline it big and bold so that you don't see some of those lines anymore and if you have a pencil you know orcas are black and white so you could always color in the part that's black and leave the white parts there as well um, but that saddle patch that's on their back the shape of the dorsal fin the size if you guys wanted to do big adult males those dorsal fins should be massive they can get you know really tall they're bigger than the females um, so if you wanted to draw a boy orca, you could do that. If you wanted to draw a baby orca, you could give them a teeny tiny little dorsal. So it's totally up to you to have a little bit of artistic expression and create your own, right? You could draw a whole pod if you want. Oh, we've got some more on the screen from the Children's Center. How awesome, you guys. How many people are in um, the group for the Southwood Bee Children's Center, just out of curiosity? Hey, we started off with nine when you guys first started, but usually okay. we have about 20 today. Yeah. So, but uh, nine and now we just have seven. We had a couple get picked up. Gotcha. Thanks for doing this. Oh, absolutely. You can also play with the shapes a little bit um, and do some of the behaviors that Lucy was talking about, a breach. You know, you can draw your oval kind of curve to start with and then add the details. How's everybody doing? Everybody have an orca? Wally, yeah. yours looks awesome. Anybody draw an orca with some salmon in its mouth? We should have asked you to do that part too, right? Feed your hungry orcas. Spencer, the one that you showed was cool too. And then let's see, I just saw in the chat, so Wally's bunch, you guys need me to put the orca back up or were you pretty close to, I think you were close to done, yeah? Okay. <laughs> well, you guys too, some of these um, activities we're gonna share with you all too, if you didn't get the print out, I do believe that we have them in an activity book on our um, ORCA network website under, uh, and Cindy, correct me if I'm wrong, is it under resources? It is under resources, yes. Okay. Or if you guys want to stop by, I noticed um, most of you said that you were in Washington. If you're close to the Langley Whale Center, we did have a chance to print those activity guides off last year. We just didn't have anybody to pass them out to because we weren't doing a lot of in-person events last year. So they're free. They're waiting for anybody that wants to stop by and pick one up. Wally, your orca looks great. Is he chasing salmon? <laughs> oh, perfect. I love it.
So who, maybe raise your hand if you're still working. Everybody's. I'm making an orca out of a cup. Oh, I want to see that. The <laughs> <laughs> McDonald's. <laughs> All right, we'll give you guys a couple more minutes. I thought it would be cool if we all hold our orcas up at the same time. You're looking at mine on the screen. I already cheated to make the steps for you. And then Lucy too, I don't know if you wanna give everybody a little preview of what you have planned for us next week. Do you wanna talk about what the topic is and what our activity looks like? Yes, I will pull up the list and I can give you a little preview of all of the ones um, that we're doing. Let me get the, to make sure I don't mix up the order. <laughs> um, let's see here. So while she's doing that, if you guys had fun this afternoon, we're going to, um, the Zoom link that was sent to you all or to your parents when they registered you for this particular mini series is going to be the same link to use throughout the whole month of June. So next month when we meet again, you can use that same link, try to make a little star or kind of bookmark that email so that you have it handy. The good news about that is if you can't, uh, you can actually still just log on and re-register yourselves. It's not taking up any additional spaces that we don't have room for. It'll just send that email to you a second time. Um, but inside that Zoom registration should be the topics that we're gonna cover, uh, that Lucy is gonna cover, and uh, just some additional details about what time to meet. Zoom is kind of funny. It wouldn't let me schedule this on the 15 minute mark. So I had to put it between three and four, but we were trying to keep these a little bit shorter with a fun activity so that you guys just had a little bit of something every Wednesday this month. Yes, and I have my list. Um, next Wednesday, we're gonna be doing, talking about how to ID the whales, which is really cool because each whale is unique. Um, so we'll learn a little bit about that. And then the next Wednesday, we get to talk about their families and your family and how there's a bunch of similarities. And then we'll talk about how they're endangered and some threats and the possibility of extinction. And then on the last Wednesday, we get to talk about learning how to report the whales, which is really, really cool if you guys can help do that. It's cool to become, you guys can become citizen scientists. Um, which is really awesome. So I'm looking forward to seeing you guys um, all through this month. It's going to be really, really fun. Well, thanks so much, Lucy. You guys thumbs up or um, give Lucy a round of applause if you want to show us your orcas one last time before we log everybody off. We're going to let you get back to your afternoon, but we appreciate you coming and we hope that you had fun. It's We're going to have um, orca cup. Nice. Okay. I love them. They all look so good. Beatrice has a mom and a baby. Yeah. Yeah, that's cute. And a salmon and an orca. I love it. You guys did so good. All right. Well, if there's no questions about anything, we'll see you next Wednesday. Sound good? All right. Everyone. Thanks Bye. everybody for coming. Thank you. Thank you, Lucy. Great job. Thanks. See. <laughs> Bye.